Good morning, church. Please stand and join us in lifting up the name of Jesus.
king and humbly left your throne to reach someone like me. If you had not walked upon this broken ground, where on earth would I be now? If you if you had not come to seek the sick and lame, to set the captive free, to break the prisoner's chains, oh, I some songs this morning and some of our technical difficulties kind of threw off some plans there but she was praying and she was prepared and she went with what God put on her heart and she went with the right one and I'm thankful for that yep. well if you have your Bible go ahead and open that to Isaiah chapter 9 Isaiah chapter 9 this morning that's where we're going to start we're going to have just a a few weeks here of a Christmas series. We've got this week, then next week, and then we have our kids program on the 18th, and then on the 25th we'll conclude our Christmas series. But it's our theme this Christmas season, because Jesus came, let us come. And we want to come with hearts uh, ready to worship, hearts uh, awed by his goodness and greatness and his supernatural love that he has shown to us. 
And so this morning, we're going to look at the topic, the idea, light has come into the darkness. The light has come into the darkness. Now, as you look around the room today, you see lights everywhere, right? We've got these really cool uh, kind of mid-century modern light fixtures up here that are pretty rad. And uh, we've got Christmas lights in our trees and our garland, and uh, we got lights everywhere. Some of you have a, a phone, you could turn on your flashlight, right? We've got LEDs, we've got lights that can, can illuminate an entire stadium to make it look like daylight. I mean, we have come a long way since Tom Edison, that's what I call him, Thomas Edison, who invented the light bulb. Ding! All right. We can laugh and smile a little bit this morning, I hope. The only way to see something with absolute clarity, however, is sunlight, right? Uh, I mean, think about back before the light bulb. They had candlelight, torches, or lamps. And you couldn't clearly see things when it was dark. And the only way you could clearly see anything was with sunlight. And the sunshine does a lot of wonderful things. And we're going to talk about those this morning. Light coming in the darkness. You know what the sun does for us? The artificial things that we've created can't completely do. Now, we've, we've done some great things. Man has created some awesome things with light, and, and they can do all kinds of things, right? You can even get a tan with light bulbs today. It's amazing, right? But the sunshine does what God created with sunshine does what nothing or very little what man created can do. I mean, God does so much more with his light than we can with what we've created. And so what does sunlight do for life? Now, if you remember your science days, uh, this will all make sense to you, but uh, sunlight helps living things grow. Sunshine gives energy to the soil and the seed and then, of course, the, the leaf and the stalk that comes up out of the ground. And sunshine helps living things grow. Now, keep all these in mind because there's also a spiritual application to this. Sunshine helps living things grow. Sunlight reveals truth that darkness hides. Anybody with me on this? Does everybody know this? If you don't know this movie, you're uncultured. You need help, okay? So this is Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay? And in the movie, he's finding the Lost Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, and he finds this medallion. And this medallion, when it's set on this staff in this particular room that has a 3D map of this area where the ark is believed to be. At a certain time, when the sunlight comes through that little hole up there, and you set that staff in the correct little spot, and the light comes through that medallion, the light will show right where the ark is. And that's how Indiana Jones knew where to dig for the ark. It's a fascinating story if you've never seen it. You need to check it out. But I jokingly use that to, to show that light, sunlight, reveals the truth. They didn't know where to look for the Ark of the Covenant. But the sunlight revealed the truth. Like three of you are with me on this. Praise the Lord. All right, let's move on. <laughs> Next one. Sunlight affects joy. Doesn't that look good? Have you ever felt like that? Wow, there it is, right? Have you ever felt like that, though? You're cold. You're down, and you step out. This is a great illustration. Thank you, Lord. Right? You step out, and you just let the vitamin D sink in, right? It brings joy. You know, we need sunshine to battle being down. I know this firsthand. Sunshine is a big deal. And so what does sunshine do? It's a natural antidepressant. Yes. It brings joy. And finally, sunlight provides warmth and comfort. That's another great feeling, isn't it? 
Just sit there and let the warmth warm you up. It just does something for your soul. Sunlight is a beautiful and wonderful and necessary thing. So when we compare the physical sunlight to the capital L light of the world, there are many things that are similar about what sunlight does for the body and the mind and what Jesus does for the spirit. And we're going to look at some of these today. Jesus, the true light, has come into the world. That's what we celebrate at Christmas time, right? That's why there's lights everywhere. Jesus, the true light, has come into the world, and in his manifestation on this earth, he has these effects on those who receive his light. Now, there are some people who live in a dark home. They, they, they hide from the sunshine, right? They don't like the sunshine. They don't like to be warm. They don't like to be joyful, okay? But anybody who will receive the light of Jesus, you receive these life-giving and blessing things from him. Light has come into this world in the person of Jesus to bring all people back into union with God. The light has come into this dark world. And today we're going to see this explosion of light in the darkness and how it still changes lives today. So let's look at this. Isaiah chapter 9, we're going to start in verse 2. And here's why. You say, that's pretty weird. Why not in verse 1? Because actually, uh, in the Hebrew scripture, like if you were to go back to the original stuff that we know, uh, verse 1 is included in chapter 8, or in that section, okay? So really, the subject changes in verse 2. And I know everybody has reasons for what they did, but we're just going to start with verse 2 today. So let's do that, right? Let's be different. All right, Isaiah 9, 2. And we're going to read through verse 7. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. And then he goes into a parenthetical kind of statement here. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. They joy, they joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Why? For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon uh, his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. And this is the word of the Lord. And what a blessing it is to us this morning. Now let's invite Jesus in today to speak to our hearts and minister to our need, okay? Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you so much for what you have done for each of us, what you are doing for each of us. And may we just soak in the word today and open ourselves to the moving, the inquiry, the comfort, the conviction of your Holy Spirit. We desperately need you today. We need light. It's a dark time for many. And so we need your light in our hearts. We ask for this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here we are. 
We see here in Isaiah 9 this prophecy of someone who's coming, a child who's going to come and do what the warriors of Israel cannot do. He's going to do things that have been unheard of since the time of man. But he starts by telling us uh, what this is going to look like spiritually. And spiritually, the prophecy goes like this. In verse 2, the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. The people living, when we think of darkness here, we're not talking necessarily about real physical darkness like, you know, nighttime or no lights. We're talking about ignorance and evil. The the dual uh, living, the dual uh, immersion in ignorance and evil. Ignorance of God, ignoring God, right? Right? And and those who are ignorant in the other sense that they don't know because they've not heard. We are living in a world of spiritual darkness because people are ignorant of God and because there's evil in this world. So are we in a dark world or not? Yes, Yes, we are now as they were then. And what had not happened to this point in, in history as Isaiah's prophesying is light coming in a real way. Now, if you go back to Genesis 1, God said, let there be light, and there was light. And you notice there's a connection there with the Spirit of God hovering over the waters. And you see these things, that God is bringing light into the world physically, but he is about to bring, in Isaiah's day, way down the road, uh, a past for you and me, spiritual light, that will shine and flash into the ignorance and evil of the day. Now, these are prophetic words, and they were echoed later on by the Apostle John. So if you have your Bible, keep your finger there in Isaiah 9 and travel with me to John chapter 1. This This is beautiful. I love how John starts his uh, writing a, a memoir, as you were, of Jesus, his letter, his gospel, he starts it with the beginning. And not the beginning like Matthew and Luke, where they start with Jesus' birth. He starts with another beginning. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, that's the word, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Now, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. We know him as John the Baptist. The same came for a witness, a witness, to bear witness of the light, notice capital L, that all men through him, the capital L light, might believe. He was not that light, John the Baptist wasn't that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Verse 9, that was the true light I love this phrase, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. When Jesus Christ came into this world, he was in the beginning. He said, let there be light, and then he became the light. There was physical light that he spoke into existence, and then he became the light that all men needed. And he lights every man that comes into the world. He was sent from God as God to light the world. We learn about John the Baptist there who was a witness. He was a witness of the light. I want to talk about another witness of the light very briefly this morning. The Bible says that we're supposed to give honor to whom honor is due. And there's a person in our congregation who for 16 years devoted their life and their talents and their time and their efforts 
to make sure the light of the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ went into our community through public access television and went into the homes of our shut-ins and still his impact is seen in our video ministry today. For 16 years of dedicated service to the video ministry for Larry Vogt. We wanted to honor him. And I want to read what it says here. The verse that we chose for this is Isaiah 52, 7. It's how beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation. 16 years volunteering to make sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ went out into our community and to our people at Central. We love you, brother. Thank you. He set the foundation here for what we have today. We can live stream today. When he started, live stream wasn't a thing, man. You know, Facebook, what's that? But he, start, he got this thing going. And because of his, his love for Jesus and his dedication of giving what he had, right? That's right. He gave what he had, technical knowledge, a knack for knowing how all that stuff works. I don't even know how to say it, how all that stuff works, right? He had the ability and the desire, the aptitude, and he took what God gave him and has been a huge impact. We'll never know until we get to heaven how many people heard the gospel because of that man's efforts. A witness of the light. Thankful for you, Brother Larry. So he has shown the light. He's been faithful in showing the light, just like John the Baptist was a witness. And that light has come into darkness. Now, if we go back to Isaiah 9, the light has shined in the darkness. Yay, the people that walked in darkness, now they've seen a great light. And then he goes in verses 3 through 5. He's talking about the ignorance and evil were winning the battle. Ignorance and evil were winning the battle. And if you notice in verse 3, it says you've multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. Everything was growing physically, but things spiritually just weren't great. There was no joy. He says this has been happening and uh, according to the joy in the harvest and people were celebrating God giving an increase and men were rejoicing when they defied this boy. He said that wasn't around anymore. He says, you, but you've broken off the yoke of the burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor. God, you've shown through. You've broken through. And then look what he says in verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise. And he, he goes on to talk a little bit about his uniform. His garments are rolled in blood. What could a warrior, a phys- what could the warriors of Israel do to defeat the darkness in the world? They were falling short. There had to be a different kind of warrior. They, they were, might as well, look what he says at the end of verse 5. They might as well just take in their uniforms and burned them up. Why doesn't it say, I thought this was interesting. Here was my question. Why doesn't it say turn in their weapons? Right? I mean, it, it would make sense to say the warriors, they couldn't do anything, so just turn in your weapons. I think it's fascinating that it talks about their uniforms. Here's why. They couldn't even lace up a uniform and fight the darkness. In other words, stay on the bench. Don't even put on your uniform. You can't fight the darkness that needs to be fought. See? It says the warriors, they can't fight the kind of darkness that needs to be fought. It is going to take a special warrior. It's going to take a warrior like the world has never seen. What is this warrior? Who is this warrior? He must be a big, strong Goliath of a man if he's going to come into the world by himself and defeat the darkness of the world. And so Isaiah is getting ready to tell us about this warrior. And we're sitting on the edge of our seat, and we can't wait to find out who he is and where he's coming from. And the very next words that he pens are this. Verse 6. So... In that case, since we need a warrior unto us, 
A warrior has come through the gate riding a big horse with a sword drawn. Is that what it says? A child is born. Now you and I are like, amen, Christmas verse, praise the Lord. <whistles> Yay, you know, we have it on our walls at Christmas time. Yeah, we got plaques, you know, and we give out Christmas cards with this. We're like, Merry Christmas. When Israel read this, when Israel heard this, they're like, what? We need a warrior and he sends a child? What's a baby going to do? What can an infant do about the darkness of this world? Well, God didn't leave Isaiah there. He came in a, by the way, this baby came in a wild way. Go back just a page, chapter 7, verse 14. Even crazier than sending a baby. How's the baby going to come through? Well, look, look at this. The Lord, therefore, the Lord himself, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold. Watch this, he says. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Hold on. So what's he mean, he shall give you a sign? Is he saying that he's going to give 2022 Americans a sign? No. If you read the whole context there, there was a guy who was questioning God about him being there for Israel, being there for his people. And so God says, ask for a sign and I'll give you a sign. And the guy's like, I'm not going to tempt God. I'm not going to ask for a sign. Nope, wouldn't do it. Wouldn't dream about asking for a sign. And God says, fine, I'll give you one anyway. Watch this, God says. Here's how interested I am in being with you. You, wanna, you think that I'm aloof. You think that I'm far removed. You think that I'm not there for Israel. God says, watch this. Here's how I'm going to come. I'm going to have a virgin conceive. I'm going to do something supernatural. A virgin is going to be with a child, and she's going to give birth to a son. And you know what we're going to call him? Look at the rest of the verse. We're going to call him God with us. Not God over us. Not God watching us. Not even God for us. God with us. God says, I'm so serious about being there for you. I am personally going to come. And I'm not even going to do it like you might expect. I'm not going to bust out of the sky with this horse with wings and a sword that nobody can pick up. I'm not going to come with this huge army to destroy all the darkness in the world. He says, watch what I'm going to do. The first time I come, I'm going to blow your minds. I'm going to come through a virgin. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk on the soil you walk on. I'm going to breathe the air that you breathe. I'm going to drink the water that you drink. I'm going to eat the food that you eat. I'm going to speak the words that you speak. That's how interested I am in being there with you. Right? If that doesn't blow our mind. That God didn't just say, hey, I'm watching and I'm pulling all the strings up here. He says, I'm coming there myself. And I'm going to do it in a way that nobody else could do it. That's how you'll know it's me. Yeah. Amazing. So back in chapter 9 and verse 6, armed with this information, Isaiah says, unto us a child is born. So here's the warrior. The warrior is coming to fight the darkness Unto us a son is given, and here's what this warrior is going to do. The government will be upon his shoulder. In other words, he's going to lead the thing. He's going to lead the charge. He's going to be the one who oversees all of it, and he's going to be there in person. He's going to take it all upon himself. Became an infant. And the government who commands and executes battle is on his shoulder. It's his responsibility. It's his battle. Don't you love this? He says the battle against darkness, you can't do anything about it, but there is one coming who it's going to be his battle, and he'll handle it. And he's going to handle it in a way that none of you expect. Because he goes on to say in verse 6, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called. 
Here's how they're going to refer to this one who is coming, this warrior, this leader, this child. This is how they're going to refer to him. First of all, wonderful. Now, hang on. We're going to go through the list, and then we're going to go back. Wonderful, counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's how he will be referred to. These are the things that people will call him. He is the light. He is wonderful. What's the definition of wonderful? Turn it around. Full of wonder. Is Jesus full of wonder? Wow, look at all the things that he did while he was just walking around on earth. Is that not full of wonder? Raising people from the dead? Healing? Making blind eyes see, deaf ears hear, right? Is that not full of walking on water? Is that not full of wonder? He is a counselor. He reveals the truth. To the heart. And I love this about Jesus. He gives it to every individual heart the way they need it. The way they need it. He's a counselor. He's the mighty God. What does that mean? He's the life giver, both spiritual and physical. He calls the shots. He's the everlasting Father. He's eternal. And he's the Prince of Peace, which encompasses truth, life, and joy. Now, what do we talk about that the sunshine does? Reveals truth. Is that what the counselor does? The sunshine brings warmth and comfort. Is that what the Prince of Peace does? The, the sunshine brings joy. It's an antidepressant. Isn't that what the wonderful one does? The sunshine is a life giver and it encourages growth. Jesus is the life. And the only way we grow is by abiding in him. You see, the light that came into darkness wasn't a candle, wasn't a light bulb. It was like another sun that overpowers anything that tries to hinder it. Shadows flee. This is our God. This is who Jesus is. This is how light has come in the darkness. And verse 7, to sum it up, it says this, His rule and reign will be forever. He will never stop ruling he will never stop reigning. And a good question at this point might be, so we're going to have a boy, infant, born of a virgin who's going to be a warrior that's going to run off the spiritual darkness in the world. A good question would be, how in the world is that going to happen? And it's even answered in verse 7 at the very end. Last sentence in verse 7, how is that going to happen? The zeal of the Lord of hosts when you read Lord of Hosts, you can read Lord of Angel Armies. The zeal of the Lord of Angel Armies. The zeal of the one who captains and, and sends and calls out angel armies. He's the one that'll make this happen. This is how it's going to come to fruition. God's got it. And the spiritual darkness, brothers and sisters, that you and I face is all answered in the light. The seasons that you and I go through. What are you lacking this morning? When you came through those doors, what did you bring in here that was heavy? I saw your faces. I know my heart. I heard the conversations. I saw the tears. 
I felt the embraces. And even the people who don't speak, sometimes our body language says more. We all carried something in here this morning. And a part of this life is carrying things like that because we are in an ignorant and evil world. But you know what? Whatever you're lacking, Jesus has it. And I know that's the canned answer, right? Well, I'll just go to Jesus. Jesus is everything. He's the answer. I know we say that, and we say it so cliched and flippantly that we've kind of just like blown it off like, yeah, well, whatever. But I want to talk to you this morning, just to your heart for a few minutes about this. Remember what we said last week. This is um, so applicable when we think about light coming into darkness because all the things that we carried in the room this morning, we can describe as darkness, things that are heavy, that break our hearts, that hurt our hearts. And the good news is that Jesus truly is the answer for all those things. How? Remember this? The soul is healed by union with God. That's how we get healing. That's how we will receive growth. If you came in this morning and your walk with Jesus or your relationship with God is kind of just planed off, it happens, okay? Sometimes you just, man, just, I'm not feeling it, right? Something's not right. I'm just not in that zone. If that's you, the sunlight, the light that came into the world, the capital L that came into the world, you know what he, he brings? He offers growth to your soul. See, we grow when we're in union with Jesus. We don't grow necessarily by reading how-to books. We don't grow by scrolling through a version devotional just to get it over with, right? We grow by union with Jesus. Amen. And I don't mean to make this sound like a formula. A plus B equals C, right? Because that's what we want, right? We, we just want to plug in these things and I'll be better. That's what I want. This isn't a formula as much as it is a state. A fluid, real relationship with real hearts and real working, moving parts and real ups and downs, okay? That's what this is. Abiding with Jesus, union with Jesus will provide. It's like receiving the sunlight. You need, you need vitamin D and you sit in the sunshine. Hey, when you're lacking in joy, sit in the sunshine. When your joy is gone or maybe just not all there, union with Jesus. Okay? If, if you find today that just the truth is foggy and you, do, you, have more answer, you have more questions than answers, sit with the truth. He's the sunlight. He reveals the truth. Abide with the truth. Union with Jesus. Okay? If you find that you're feeling cold and alone, and we all get there. It's not because so-and-so hasn't returned your text. It's because we're not having union with Jesus. The light has come. John even goes on to say, he came into his own, and his own received him not. But as many as did receive him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. You see, it's a receiving that we have to do. Right. You don't just get saved and walk an aisle and get baptized and tuck a Bible under your arm and all of a sudden you're just joyful, you're comforted, you have the truth, right? And everything's great. You have joy. No. It's union with Jesus. Constant abiding 
in Christ. This is where the light then does its work in our hearts. The light has come. Have you received him? Let's stand together. <clears throat> so bow your head right where you're at. Again, I, I want to emphasize that, that, that we, what we call the altar, the front of the platform here, where people come and pray from time to time, that is always open. So if you sense Jesus is nudging you to go forward and make it more of a uh, uh, obvious commitment, it's here. You're welcome to come. But if you just need to stay right where you're at, I want to ever, all to bow our heads, more importantly, bow our hearts, and think about what you brought into the room this morning. What is the heavy, the darkness? What is lacking for you today? Now, the short answer is go to Jesus. And that sounds like this a kind of out there thought. But make it real. Set up an appointment with him. If that helps you, set up an appointment. If that helps you to go home today and sit down in your room at a table, maybe you'll find a quiet spot somewhere and just spend time with them. Talk to them about what is, what is the darkness or the heaviness that you're carrying today. Here's some things I know about him. He hears you. He knows you. And he loves you. If you think that any of that's not true, know that the Bible says over and over, he hears you, he knows you, and he loves you. So go to him. What is it that you need to turn over to him? This will be a healing prayer for you. We do bear one another's burdens. We do have a yoke in this life. It's easier and lighter when we are unified with Jesus. He said, take my yoke upon you. For my burden is easy and light. Bearing burdens by yourself will wear you down. Union with Jesus. Talk to him. Jesus, we're thankful for your closeness. We're thankful for access to you. I'm glad that you even said, come boldly to my throne. You named it. You even named your throne. You named your throne grace so we don't even have to come in fearful or ashamed we can come boldly to your throne and expect to receive grace because you said come boldly to the throne of grace and you can obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So Jesus, we come to you this morning for union. We are going to come to you today, this afternoon, tonight. There are people who've set up appointments with you already for tomorrow morning and this week. We need you. And I think, more importantly, we want you. We want you. Jesus, heal our hearts. Heal our wounds. 
Give us joy. Bring comfort. Reveal your truth. And help us grow. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are glad that you came today, and I hope that this has been a, a service that has brought comfort to your heart through the music and the message and the word. And so we can walk through those doors right now with an unburdened heart, walking out with Jesus, going to through this week with him, all right? I want to remind you that tonight uh, at 5 o'clock, we have our Bible studies here on campus. And uh, so I hope to see you here back for that. Otherwise, if you get a chance, um, make sure you congratulate Brother Larry and thank him for all his years of service in getting the gospel out. Okay? God bless you. You are dismissed.